Hello friends, so here we are back with topic of genetics that is Mendelian genetics and we are starting with a few basic terminologies of the Mendelian genetics. Uh, friends, in the previous video we have gone through two basic terminology of the genetics that is heredity and variation. Now heredity is related to the forwarding characters from one generation to other into the moreover similar into the nature. But if the character is changed then it is said to be a variation. Now variation is extremely important with respect to uh, diversity which is observed around us. We have so many different from tiniest organism called microorganism to giant organisms like very huge trees and wells or elephant around us. So those variations are coming from the genetical point of view uh, with two manners, right? So variation are of two types. Number one type is somatic variation. Number two is blastogenic. Now if I talk about the somatic variation, this variation is uh, as you know term which is soma. Soma matlab cell, right? The normal uh, cells which are not germ cells, they are somatic cells. So if I talk about the cells which are actually non-gametic cells, they are somatic cells. So variation of somatic cells that is external characters, it is called somatic variation which is definitely non-inheritable as it is not germinal. Fine. Second is blastogenic. <clears throat> now the cells which are germ cells. If variation comes into germ cells, then it is said to be germinal variation, which is definitely transferring from one generation to the other. That is, it is called inheritable characters or variations, right? So there are two types of variation what we have observed, right? One is somatic, which is generally external and non-inheritable. Second is blastogenic which are actually related to the germinal cells which are inheritable in nature. Now if I talk about the blastogenic characteristic feature or variation, it used to be of again two types. One is continuous variation. Now why it is said to be continuous variation? Because it is forwarded from one generation to the other without having any gap and second one discontinuous that is if it is forwarded from one generation it can skip the other generation then it is said to be non discontinuous variation now the reason behind continuous variation and discontinuous variation is for example if you talk about the continuous variation it is caused by crossing over mechanism now crossing over mechanism we have gone through at the time of the cell division process what we have understood in standard 11 right chapter number 10 cell division so at the time of crossing over few genes are getting changed or few number of the uh, nucleotides are getting changed of the gene Fine. If I talk about discontinuous variation, it is called mutation. The process is mutation. Fine. Due to the discontinuous variation, why it is discontinuous? Because of the mutation and mutation caused two different expression of the similar gene. It creates the other expression. Right. So uh, the the characteristic feature getting changes a bit right thoda change ho jata hai character that's why from dominant 
it is converted into the recessive character and recessive could not be able to express into the next generation it can express later on when two recessive gets to accumulated together into the next generations then it can be expressed again that is why it is discontinuous so we are going ahead with the history of the mendelism fine mendel experimented genetic genetical expressions uh, into the pea plant first of all right so mendel on genetics uh, description of mechanism of hereditical processes hereditary processes now how these characteristic features are getting forwarded from one generation to other he wanted to know the process right and the formulation of the principle he formulated few principles which are known as the mendelism so his study and his conclusion is nothing but the mendelism mendel postulated various experimental laws into relation of the genetics the result of his experiments were published in science general court nature of the gender variation in 1866 but thing is that mendel was unable to get any of the popularity as no one understood of their any of the uh, uh, style of the experiment or uh, no one could be able to understand the formulation what he has postulated so no one understood of his any of the work he died in 1884 without getting any of the credit of his work due to the now we are talking about the rediscovery of the mendel experiment as we know that mendel could not be able to get any attention no credit has been given to uh, uh, to the mendel for his experiment when he was alive so after 16 years of the mendel's death in 1900 mendel's postulates were rediscovered again and that rediscovery was made by three scientists independently so first scientist made rediscovery started rediscovery is karl koren of the germany the experiment on maize is uh, followed by the koren look uh, mendel has experimented on pea plant but koren has performed the similar experiment on the maize plant and given all the laws of the mendel experiments right so he has actually given the laws of the mendel experiments second scientist who rediscovered the uh, uh, the laws of the mendel is hugo de vries of the holland he experimented on evening primrose and he published mendel's result in 1901 into flora magazine now the third one is eric von schermark of austria he experimented the similar experiment of the mendels in so many different flowering plants and postulated the similar theories on all of the flowering plants again right so these three have contributed maximum for rediscovery of the mendelian experiments you are supposed to remember all three contributions contributions and names of the each of them right now if i talk about important terms of the genetics we are starting with the first term called gene right now gene is a modern terminology mendel actually has termed it as a factor unit factor now in modern sense an inherited factor that is factor which is responsible for the inheritation of a particular trait that determines a biological character of an organism is called the gene and that is the only why it is the functional unit of the hereditary material 
सो जिंग इज अ बेसिक फंक्शनल मटीरियल और यूनिट ऑफ द हेरिडिटी राइट सो ड्यू टू द जीन्स कैरेक्टर्स आर फॉरवर्डेड फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन टू द अदर आई रिपीट वंस अगेन दैट जीन्स आर लोकेटेड ऑन डी एन ए इट इज अ स्मॉल सेगमेंट ऑफ डी एन एंड डी एन ए इज अ लॉन्ग पॉलीमर विच इज हैविंग सो मेनी डिफरेंट जीन्स ऑन दैम इंडिविजुअल जीन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फॉरवर्डिंग वन कैरेक्टर कैरेक्टर्स आर एक्सप्रेसिवली प्रोड्यूस्ड बाई प्रोटीन्स दो इट इज स्ट्रक्चरल दो इट इज फंक्शनल कैरेक्टर सो जीन्स आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल मोर ओवर फॉर जनरेशन ऑफ द न्यू प्रोटीन वन जीन वन प्रोटीन एंड वन प्रोटीन वन कैरेक्टर दैट इज हाउ जीन इज प्रोड्यूसिंग कैरेक्टर फाइन सो जीन इज एक्चुअली कंट्रोलिंग द एक्सप्रेशन बाय प्रोसेस ऑफ द फोटोसिंथेसिस वॉट वी हैव कंक्लूडेड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर राइट फाइन सेकेंड वन द टर्मिनोलॉजी इज द एलिलोमोर्फ और द एलील एलील इंडिकेट्स ऑल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म ऑफ द सेम जीन वन जीन इज हैविंग अ टू फॉर्म और टू एलील फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल इफ आई टॉक अबाउट वन कैरेक्टर दैट इज हाइट इट इज हैविंग टू एक्सप्रेशन वन टॉल सेकेंड डुआर्फ now toll is maintained by capital t capital t look allelomorph so s it is of two types two alternate forms right it is alternative form of this the same gene fine so it is into the pair right so tallness indicated by capital t capital t dwarfness is indicated by small t small t so you have two alternate form of the similar gene expression expression is tallness and dwarf and character is the height fine so one character is or can be having two different types of expression which are controlled by alleles so always one gene is having two alleles right two may be similar look here it is similar here it is similar or it may be different that later on we are about to conclude what a uh, similar character can be said or similar alleles can be said and what dissimilar alleles to be said right fine let us talk about gene locus as we have seen that gene is located on dna that location where the gene is found is called gene locus it is the specific place on the chromosome chromosome is dna look chromosome never can be found inside normal cells it is found only in dividing cell that you are supposed to remember right chromosomes are arrangement of the cell division not regular cell processes so it is a specific place on the chromosome where gene is located it is said to be gene locus fine two more terms wild allele and mutant allele let us include what they are fine and original allele look original allele matlab it is forwarded again and again generation to generation with no change it is called original allele it is dominant in expression and widely spread into the population and that is called wild allele because it is widely spread that is why it is wild allele now an allele formed by mutation look mutation is a change right so it is changed the original allele is changed so allele formed by mutation into the wild allele and recessive in expression which is actually seen less common into the population right it is termed as the mutant allele right so wild is uh, dominant and mutant allele is recessive right see so wild and mutant there are two types of allele which are found 
inside the cells of uh, any of the genes okay the other way uh, capital T capital T and small t small t we uh, we have uh, seen into the previous slide right so they are homozygous in nature look homozygous and heterozygous there are two terms which is given by Batson and uh, Saunders in 1902 right so both the gene of the character both the allele of the character when they are identical to each other capital T capital T pair of two capital T fine then it is called homozygous or genetically pure why because they are dissimilar they are forwarded as it is from the parent so genetically pure for that character now it gives rise to offspring having the same character on self breeding self breeding matlab similar breeding with the similar character plants so it is giving the again new generation plant with the same character fine so same character on the self breeding here capital t capital t it is homozygous but capital t indicates dominancy capital dominancy and small character recessiveness right so capital t capital t is indicated as homozygous dominant and small t small t is termed as homozygous recessive right the other term is heterozygous fine here capital t capital t homozygous here small t small t homozygous but if capital t and small t get together which is actually not identical this is capital this is small then it is called heterozygous in nature so both the genes of the character are unlike then it is said to be heterozygous or hybrid look this is hybrid this is pure why pure both are similar why hybrid because it is not pure it is mixture that is why it is hybrid so you must get the difference between pure and hybrid fine if we know the number of heterozygous pairs we can predict look prediction it is actually coming for solving few problems of the genetics if into the uh, 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 exams or any uh, competition so we can predict uh, uh, with a particular formulations so let us talk about those formulations look first number of type of gamete we can predict right so 2 raised to n where n is the number of the heterozygous pair if it is 2 means if genes are 2 genes then 2 raised to 2 that is number of gametes which are produced will be 4 similarly you can predict the number of phenotypes that is again 2 raised to n right and you can predict the number of the genotype as well that is 3 raised to n these two terminology phenotype and genotypes are new for us again so let us go with two terminologies known as phenotype and genotype letter first is genotype the genotype is genetic constituents of an organism look we have concluded earlier capital T capital T that is homozygous but dominant capital T small t heterozygous and small t small t homozygous but recessive these three types are genotype you are actually indicating the genes types of allele when you are indicating types of allele it is said to be genotype right so genotypes of the organisms with reference to these particular pair of allele so you are indicating what kind of allele which are present into that organism then it is said to be genotype if i am talking about external feature which are 
shown by an organism may be color may be behavior may be type of the uh, organ uh, type of the reactivity right it is called phenotype so character in external or into the behavioral it is phenotype and when you are expressing the alleles it is genotype so genotype and phenotype two types of characteristic feature you are supposed to conclude uh, later on into the experiments of the mendels right fine pure line and hybrid these two terminologies again have come across right pure line is what when you don't have mixture of two types of allele it is called pure line fine so generation of homozygous individual right it is pure line so capital t capital t which is indicated here is pure line small t small t which is indicated here is pure line but capital t small t which is indicated here is the hybrid one so generation of homozygous individual which are produce offspring of the only one type that they breed true for their phenotype and genotype then it is called the pure line breed but when it is getting mixture it is either mono hybrid di hybrid or poly hybrid right so one allelic pair considered to be mono hybrid two allele or two pair of allele uh, uh, genes then it is di hybrid and three or more than three genes or allelic pairs are take, uh, take, uh, taken as consideration then it is called the polyhybrid cross fine <clears throat> similarly when two allelic pairs are used for the crossing dihybrid and more than two allelic pairs in a cross then it is called the polyhybrid cross now one more term reciprocal uh, cross now the reciprocal cross involves two crosses concerning the same characteristic but with uh, reverse the sexes fine uh, let me uh, focus more on that if i have crossed to parental plant one is taken as a male plant one is taken as a female plant i have crossed it i hybrid it and i have uh, uh, produced the progeny but the types of character what i wished is not concluded with that hybridization now what i do into the next uh, uh, set of the experiment i change the cross of the parental so uh, the plant which i have taken it as a, a male i take it as female and Uh, parent which i have taken at female i uh, take it as a male so it is called reciprocal cross right now next terminology is genome now genome is what uh, a set of genes actually are located inside our uh, nucleus of a cell but it is always in a pair so when you have one gene you have the other as a pair so you have two set of the chromosomes two sets of the genes two sets of the dna out of those two or out of the uh, those pairs if you conclude one and you uh, uh, you note down which type of genes are present on which number of chromosome so total number of gene right so total set of gene that is G dna instruction in haploid set look haploid set is what when you are dividing two sets separately if two together are there then it is diploid and if you remove one from the other set it is called haploid set so haploid set of the chromosome and inherited as unit from parent to the offspring then it is called the genome now when it is happening it is happening at the meiosis process meiosis process happening at the generation of the germ cell 
out of our normal somatic cells. So, gametic cells is a result of meiotic process of the normal body cells of any of the individuals. Right? So, when germ cell are produced, when division is happening with the meiosis, at that time haploidy is possible out of diploidy. And the number of chromosomes which are going forwarded actually into the gamete is genome. Right? Second, gene pool. Now, one individual is having genome. Similar genome may be produced into the other individual, may be present into the uh, further uh, other organism. So, all the genotypes of all the organism of a population that is similar type of the uh, population. So, it forms the gene pool. Fine. F1 generation. Uh, Mendelian experiments uh, uses this terminology F1 generation, F2 generation and parental generation. Now parental generation is the starting point of the experiment, the first cross, right? So uh, the plants from where we are getting first cross are taken as a parental generation, right? So now we are concluding about the F2, F1 generation, sorry. So, F1 generation is first filial. Filial matlab generation of spring, right? So, phyllis is equal uh, to son or philia is equal to daughter and this term was given by the Batson in 1905. So, it is generation, sorry, uh, uh, the first filial generation is the generation of the hybrids which is produced from cross between genetically different individuals called parents so parents are crossed and the next generation f1 filial 1 is produced now f2 generation right so f2 generation is second filial generation is the generation of individual which is produced by interbreeding or intrabreeding amongst the individual of the f1 generation Right? So, inbreeding or interbreeding of M1 generation produce the F2 generation. So, parents are generating F1 and F1 are generating the F2 generation. Now, Punnett square. Right? It is actually methodology. It is a checkerboard used to show the result of a cross between two organisms. So, when any of the experiment is shown, that experiment when it has to be represented so it is represented by mean of the punit square right so it was given by rc punit in 1927 to depict both genotype and phenotype of the progeny our next terminology is back cross fine now the cross is what when you are taking two plants and when you are hybridizing them it is called the cross fine it is a cross which is performed between hybrid that is f1 and one of the parent look parents when they are hybridizing then it is producing the f1 now if you take plant from f1 and when you cross it with the parent then it is called the back cross because you are going back for the hybridization so in plant breeding back crosses are important actually right is performed a few times in order to increase a traits of the parent into the offsprings right <coughs> so pure line hybrid uh, sorry a pure line is crossed with the hybrid right so this is pure line parents and it is actually crossed by the hybrid to increase the characters of the parents into the hybrid right so back cross is used for that fine second terminology is test cross test cross one of the important formula for finding out the homozygous or heterozygous uh, genotype from uh, the uh, 
the wild character wild character matlab which are dominant fine if i talk about tallness and if i talk about the dwarfness tallness is actually uh, dominant so if i have two or more than two different types of tall individual but i don't know where, whether it is capital t capital t or capital t small t i need to find out i need to test it whether it is these or that homozygous or heterozygous why so i need to take it into the consideration that they though they are similar though they are tall in nature but they may be having homozygous or may be having heterozygous pair of the allele so to find out that we are using the tool called the test cross it is the experiment which is used by the mendel right how look at to this it is a cross to know whether an individual is homozygous or heterozygous for dominant characters the individual is crossed with the recessive parent right it is compulsory that it has to cross with the recessive pure line parent only if the ratio will be 50% of the uh, offspring then it is heterozygous individual for an example if double hybridization that is two character right then the recessive ratio will be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 right so test cross help us to find out genotype of parent so heterozygous here they don't mentioned homozygous if it is homozygous then the uh, the result will be 100% right here uh, here you can see the 50% ratio if it is hit, uh, heterozygous in the case of homozygous individual the result will be 100% dominant character of the offspring will be resulted out of the test cross so result of the test cross if it is 100% then it is homozygous and result of the test cross if it will be 50% then it used to be considered as the heterozygous individual right later on we'll see each of these into the detail right so here is the experiment which has been shown right f1 hybrid right here is capital t small t that is heterozygous it is crossed with recessive parent right it is uh, here it is mentioned it should be crossed with the recessive parent only right so recessive parent and f1 hybrid that is heterozygous so if it is heterozygous it can produce two types of gametes one is capital t which is forwarded here one is small t which is forwarded here if this <coughs> germ cell is crossed with this gamete it produces capital t and small t here right which is tall in nature because of the present of this capital t if this small t gamete and this small t gamete will fuse together right then it can produce the new zygote of small t small t which will be resulted into into the new offspring of the uh, recessive trait that is dwarf plant so this will be 50% ratio of each tall plant and the dwarf plant so that is how it is proving that the main plant which has been crossed was heterozygous right so when result is 50% it is heterozygous when result is 100% here then it is the homozygous right so that is how we can use we can conclude the fact one new term self cross or selfing it is process of the fertilization of the uh, pollen or male gamete of the same individual so what it is saying actually one plant is there uh, one flower is a, a male flower one flower is female flower so from the same plant um, uh, from the pollen of the same plant when it is collected and when it is forwarded into the stamen of the same then it is called the self cross or that process is called the selfing right second observed or expected result 
now experimental result confirm to ones expected through the theory of the probability if the size of the sample is small but they tend to approach the latter if the sample size is large fine uh, let me uh, expand it more into the detail <clears throat> uh, so many theories so many experiments were done by the mendel but it used to be with a, a small sample into the garden with one plant called p but when it used to be observed with the so huge population of an individuals then a result may be differing from expected postulations right so expectation is different thing and observation is a different phenomena and that's what it is observed versus the expected result hybrid the organism which is produced after crossing of two genetically different individuals are called the hybrid so if it is capital t capital t and if it is crossed with the small t small t the number of offspring which will be produced will be one capital t and one small t which is called the hybrid so last uh, point of today's discussion is heredity and variation in sexual and asexual reproduction fine we know that there are two types of mode of reproduction one is asexual reproduction and the other is the sexual mode of reproduction fine asexual mode of reproduction is indicated or it is produced by single parent right but sexual mode of reproduction involves two parental involvement now or it is made by two different cells called gamete but for that fusion of gamete that is called fertilization has to happen when fertilization is happening at that time and when uh, gametogenesis happening at that time there are two time where we can find a difference which are happening mixture which are happening with genes right at the time of gametogenesis when meiotic process are happening crossing over is getting resulted right so due to the crossing over we can produce the variations now at the time of forwarding that right uh, the mixture uh, at the time of the formation of zygote maybe some mutation due to so many reasons can happen right so th these are the two possibilities where you can find the variation so sexual mode of reproduction always tend to produce variation that you are supposed to understand very well so sexual mode of reproduction is uh, tend to produce the variation so variations are common because of involvement of the meiosis and fertilization two different event which are very uh, you know tendency of the uh, producing variation is of the number one meiosis and of the fertilization so and the offspring receive some trait of the father and some of the mother right and few of them will be fused with some differences that is called variation now if i talk about asexual reproduction they inherits all the traits of only single parent and without any change so they are almost a carbon copy of the parents and it is known as the remit a group of remit is called clones fine so by these we are concluding this lecture right we are coming forward into the next lecture with mendel's experiment that is monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross so i'll see you later on bye and have a nice day